Does the future of fashion involve 3D scanning? I'm Tanya Hall for ZDNet and Tech Republic, and joining me is Colin Hunter. He is the co-founder and CEO of Alton Lane. Welcome, Colin. Thank you. Thank you for having me. What is Alton Lane? Alton Lane is a menswear brand. We are about nine years old, and we started the company to try to disrupt the men's fashion space. We, uh, both, both my co-founder and myself, really enjoy wearing nice clothes, as most guys want to look good, but we hate the shopping experience, and we wanted to disrupt that and make it not feel as painful uh, getting clothes that make you look and feel your best. What was the inspiration for 3D printed clothing? So I, I was in my previous life, I was a, a strategy consultant and I was taking two to three flights a week, going through the airport, the TSA body scan check. And I would, had simultaneously been thinking of this concept of Alton Lane and a light bulb went off that this technology really must exist for scanning the body, but to, it, it must exist for other purposes. And you know, when, when we were thinking about how to deliver that incredible fit for a customer, no one really thinks about the, the process of getting 60 measurements taken by hand as a really positive thing. It takes 40 minutes, it can be a little bit intrusive. And, and so the thought was, if we could utilize technology to not only deliver a more precise fit, but also take away the hassle of getting measured, we could have a winning concept and started looking into it and made some phone calls and sure enough, the technology did exist. Just no one had really made it front and center of, of a retail kind of experience. And so we were really the first to do that and, and the results have worked out really well. What are some of the technical challenges in producing 3D printed, 3D printed clothing? We have 3D scanning technology. And so the way our process works, a customer comes into one of our showrooms around the country and they step inside our 3D body scanner and it looks like an oversized phone booth and it's got all these sensors and receivers and it works somewhat like sonar but with light. Light hits your body, goes back and hits the receiver and generates these thousands of data points. And from that, we actually create a digital avatar of your body. So our, that, that digital avatar is then sent to our tailors around the world and they can effectively see you and your posture and whether you've had a broken collarbone and all of your exact measurements while they're creating your garments. And that's instantaneous. If, we, if you get measured in New York on a Monday, within 24 hours, your garments are, are in construction with the greatest level of precision available on the market. So how does the measurement process work then? I mean, how much of it is automated and how much requires human assistance? It's a great question. And what we try to tell our customers is, despite the really cool technology that 3D body scanning is, it's not a magic box. And you still need an element of that, that human guide to walk you through the process and to really have a conversation around preferences. You could take two customers with the exact same dimensions living in different states or even in the same city, and they just might have different preferences. And what modern, modern might mean to one of those customers might mean something totally different to the other customer. So we are able to capture hundreds of measurements in 30 seconds with our 3D body scanning technology, but we still take a few select hand measurements and use sample garments to zero in on exactly what that customer wants. And you know, because my neck, for example, might be 15.73 inches, but I don't want my shirt to fit exactly 15.73 inches. I would feel like I'm suffocating to death. And so, you know, it's really getting a sense of what makes that customer feel comfortable. And if you're comfortable, you're going to feel confident. And we're really ultimately trying to deliver confidence for our customers. What kind of adoption rate are you seeing? I mean, are people accepting and open to this idea? Absolutely. I mean, I, I think... We've done over 50,000 body scans, and I can count on one hand the number of times a customer has not felt comfortable doing it. I think for a lot of our, our clients, it's, an act, it's a draw, that it's, it's interesting, it's engaging. You know, most industries have that industrial revolution type moment where technology comes in and does a plateau shift in terms of efficiency or experience, and it really hadn't happened in the menswear space. And so we saw this opportunity to 
completely change how measurements were being taken and how that ultimately can lead to not only a better fit, but a better experience. Uh, we're able to reduce the alteration rates that our customers have versus going somewhere else to get clothes made. And that ultimately means we're saving you time, we're saving you money, um, and we're delivering a better fit so you're going to look better. You've said data and experience are the future of retail. Explain that. Yeah, so I think we have entered into the experience economy. Um, and for companies that want to compete with the Amazons of the world, you're never going to do it from a scale point of view. So you have to play to your strengths. And playing to the experiential side of retail um, is I, where I believe you, you have to do in, in order to win. Um, you know, on the experience side, you've got, it all comes down to building relationships with our customers. There are certain products that you want in a very transactional way. And I'm a big Amazon fan. I'm an Amazon Prime user. There are certain things I want to be able to go on one click. I don't need to think about it. And it tends to be the more commoditized products. The less a product is commoditized, the more you want that sort of human interaction. And you really want to get the confidence in that purchase. It also happens to be the more expensive something is as well. And so what we've found is with garments like clothing that's custom made, that's not commoditized, it's really important to have that human interaction. And when that human interaction effectively is called brick and mortar shopping, um, most guys don't like to shop. And so we needed to, to transform that. I think the way the industry had addressed that challenge is largely through e-commerce. Guys hate to shop, let's just make it quick and easy. Um, but the problem is it doesn't work for a non-commoditized product as well. And so for those products where guys want to feel the fabric and they want that second opinion, they want to be guided through the process, it's really important to not to provide an experience where we can do that, but do it exceptionally well and do it in a place where guys feel comfortable, where it doesn't feel like shopping and where we can really transform that. And I think on the data side, data for me is largely a way to enhance the customer experience. We are all data collectors every single day. I collect bits of data about my wife in terms of I know what her favorite color is and I know what food she likes and what kind of wine she likes. And I use that data, so to speak, to hopefully be a better husband and to surprise her with the right kind of flowers and to remember the kind of color, what color she wants when I'm buying her a gift. It's the same type of philosophy with our customers. If we can remember your favorite drink or remember that you travel all the time for work, we can make smarter recommendations for you. And we're not treating you like we're meeting you for the first time every time you come back in. And unfortunately, that's the status quo in retail. If you walk into a store, it's, hello, how can I help you? It's not, it's good to see you again. You know, how are your kids doing? Uh, how was that vacation in France? And being able to offer that level of service ultimately leads to a better customer experience. It leads to deeper customer relationships. And that's ultimately going to lead to greater customer loyalty. And that's what everyone in retail wants. They want that customer loyalty. They want that customer lifetime value. They just don't know how to get it. And what we think is it's actually getting back to how business used to be. It's getting back to the simplicity of business, which is far more relational than transactional. You take up to 300 measurements of each customer to produce an item of clothing. You must generate a huge volume of data. So how do you use the data to improve your operations? I mean, you were talking about collecting the data on the personal side. And, and to that point, how are you protecting that data? It's a great question. We, on, the, on the data protection side, we leverage our network of partners and the platforms we're built on, kind of their security teams to make sure that all of our data is, is protected. In terms of how we use the data, we really try to look for ways to use it to enhance the customer experience. And you know, when we think it, we, you're right, we are, are collecting a tremendous amount of customer measurements and customer data. And while all of that is private on an individual level, we're able to look at trends when we look at it overall in all of our customers. We can see trends of fit geographically, which is interesting as we explore potential off the rack products that you could pick up today or tomorrow, there might be a different fit profile in Dallas than in New York. And the more we can do that from our data, it actually opens up the ability for, for some pretty interesting things on the product side. What it also allows us to do is to 
effectively ensure we are providing a better fit for our customers. Because we have this same technology in all of our stores, we can review a customer's measurements from anywhere in the world effectively with access to our, our servers. And so we can start to see um, potential measurement errors. Uh, I, I mentioned that there are some hand measurements that we do to really get a sense for preference. Well, by looking at customers with similar fit profiles and how their garments ended up fitting and what alterations were needed, et cetera, we can actually almost predict how your garments are going to fit before we even put it into production. Um, and so by leveraging kind of that massive universe of data, we're able to deliver a better fit than anyone else in the industry. And that's ultimately our goal. Um, if, you, if you go to Savile Row in London and get a bespoke suit made, you are effectively having a 500% alteration experience. You're coming back for five in-person fittings. And while there is a romantic element of that and the tradition that would go along with a Savile Row bespoke suit, most men don't have that time today. And time really is money and, and time is that most precious commodity. And we want to be able to deliver that same precision of fit but sometimes out of the box or, or at least 80% of the time within one fitting. And so that, that fundamentally changes kind of the time it would take to get something that fits you perfectly. Um, and what's cool to see uh, you know, from the inside of the company is we are getting better every single month, every single year. The more customers we get in our system, the better our learning can get and the more precise we can get with the fit we provide. So what's the next big step in 3D scanning and fashion? You know, it's interesting. I, I think some people are looking at being able to, it's all about cutting the time down. So can you go from a scan directly to the factory? Um, and I think there are, I had a meeting last week about a group that's trying to figure out how to um, have these mobile scanning pods where you step inside for 30 seconds and then those garments are whatever you want to order immediately sent to the factory 30 seconds later. I'm skeptical of that. I don't know if that's necessarily, you know, I think anytime new technology comes out, people want to try to take it to an extreme. And I think you really have to stay focused on the customer experience and what are you actually going to get out of this? I think that with our current 3D scanning, it's all about continued precision and what we're able to, to deliver there. Um, where I think technology comes in is with greater recommendations on the fabric side. Um, you know, when you think about, you know, again, we get back to our brand premise that every guy wants to look good. A lot of guys have a hard time knowing how to get there and fit is part of it. Style is the other piece. And, you know, we, because we carry a wider range of a kind of wide array of fabrics, we will see customers that, um, on all ends of the price spectrum that don't necessarily know what they want, but they know they want to look good. And the more we can use data and, and kind of the preference data that we see from customers and some of those demographic trends and, and things that we can see on the back end to better predict for customers what they're going to need and how to evolve their closet and when they're going to need it, when they're going to need to reorder that extra pair of pants or when they're going to need to get that, that suit or what, jackets they should look look for, it starts to become really interesting in terms of closet prediction, uh, being in front of trends, figuring out when kind of you would fit into a trend life cycle. Um, sometimes, you know, what, what might happen on the runway, if you are very style fashion forward, you might be wearing something like that six months later. If you don't feel, if that's not your preference to be that fashion forward in, in that sort of a trendsetter, you might want to, you might never want to wear that trend, or you might want to wear that trend three years later. And the more we can kind of get to know our customers and use that relational data combined with our fit data and kind of that preference data really opens up the door for greater recommendations that are personalized to each individual customer and the ability to, to kind of help you plan the perfect wardrobe down the road without even having to think about it. Colin, I am ready for this myself. When are you going to offer this to women? When we're ready, we, we want to, we get asked that question a lot uh, and we would love to. Um, 
I think everything we do, we want to do really well. And we have a lot to continue to focus on and work on to improve the experience and the fit and preferences for men. With that said, we are constantly exploring ways to start testing. And I would say within the next year, there very well could be some, some beta groups that roll out with, uh, with a product for women. Well, I'm going to hold you to that. Colin Hunter, co-founder and CEO of Alton Lane. Thank you so much for shedding some light on the future of fashion. Um, if somebody wants to connect with you, maybe they want to buy a suit or uh, just find out more information about you and the work that you're doing. How can they do that? Uh, you can do it on Instagram at, at Alton Lane, uh, or you can send me an email, Colin at AltonLane.com. Thank you again. And if you guys want to follow more of my interviews, you can do that right here on ZDNet or Tech Republic, or maybe find me at TanyaHall.net. I've got links to all my social sites. Thanks for watching. Thank you.